Welcome to the Drill Down In-Depth Answers to Oilfield Questions. I'm John Spears. And I'm Richard Spears. So Richard, last time we teased the subject of this week's talk, which is uh, looking ahead at the frack market uh, here in the U.S. over the next year. So. Because uh, mm -hmm. one of us, I don't remember which one, had mm -hmm. said, I yeah. think that we might be getting to the irreducible minimum number right. of drilled but uncompleted wells. And if that's the case, right. that's fixing to have an impact, a yeah, negative sure. impact on the frack business. So, you know, what's been going on this year? So this year here in the U.S., we've seen rig count go up on the order of about 7%. If we're thinking about year over year kind of changes, right? Rig count up 7%. Right. And frack activity measured different ways. Frack activity up on the order of close to 30%, I would say. Ooh, right? How does a frack mm -hmm. market, how does, how does frack work, which happens after you drill the well, <laughs> how does it rise at four times yeah, right. the exactly. pace of yep. drilling activity? Yeah, oh. that's the that's the key. I mean, we're talking roughly um, eleven thousand frack jobs being started this year, and I think your number for revenues on the on yeah, the, on let's the call it twelve billion dollars. Twelve billion dollars, right? So, um, my uh, back of the envelope estimate is that about. 25% of the frack activity that we've seen this year is really coming from those drilled but uncompleted wells being taken out of inventory, fracked, and put online. Now, to save the folks who right. are driving down the road from Katy, Texas yes. into downtown, mm -hmm. and they just heard you say 25%, yep. and are they doing the math right that says if the frack yep. market is $12 billion, yes. 25%, three of those billion yes. comes from the catch-up work right. on completing uh, ducks. Yeah, that's right. Yes, absolutely. So um, uh, if you look at the numbers that come... Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. So if that's uh -huh. okay, if we were only completing wells we were drilling, yes. the frack market would be nine. That's right. Exactly. So exactly. $9 billion, but instead it's 12. Exactly. So the increment is I'm catching up. I'm catching up. I got a big inventory of right. wells you that know, I can complete. Last All right. couple of years, we've seen that count of drilled but uncompleted wells rise, 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 rise. But this year, we've been reducing that um, duck inventory by about 250 wells a month. Okay, Do it over the course of the year, that's, right, 3, that's roughly 3,000 wells coming out of inventory and being Aha. put online, right? So that's a substan that, that accounts for the substantial growth we've measuring in the frack market so this year how many of uh -huh. the new wells that we'll drill this year right. new wells right uh -huh. are being completed um, yeah, i guess if you drill a new well it's going to be completed it, but it, it's not going well it temporarily goes it, into the drilled and completed category but it it resides there for a short period of time and then it's coming back so how many wells are we talking about that are being drilled mm -hmm. this year this and, year. Be, and be, so roughly somewhere between eight and nine thousand newly drilled wells All are right. being fracked and put online this year. And then another rough 3,000 are being pulled out of this uncompleted category and fracked and put online, right? Yeah. So, um, so is, yeah. yeah, so there are right at this moment, probably just shy of 6,000 drilled but uncompleted wells still hanging around, right? Yep, because we always have we'll always have drilled and completed yeah. so wells. The, the question then it, it was sort of what, how low can that number go, right? Because if you've got, uh, 450 or 500 well, we have rigs 500, running. 500 rigs working right now. All right. So okay. I got 500 rigs working. They're, they they uh -huh. finish a well every uh, every every day. Or, well, yeah, well, but, okay, I, look, not each one. Not each one, but <laughs> so uh, a rig might be estimated to drill two and a half new wells a month, right? Would that be a yeah, rough guess? Yeah, certainly two. Yeah. Plus. Okay. So let's make it simple on ourselves. Let's just say each of those 500 rigs is working today drills two wells a month. So that's a thousand new wells each month. And right? I've got 12 months. And I've got 12 months. But the question is how long, what, how much time takes place between that time that well gets drilled and when it gets fracked. So, so I know what my shortest amount of time would be. Okay. Let's hear that. It'd uh -huh. be uh, 45 days. 45, a month and a half. Longest amount of time could be at nine months, nine months, right? So if we just struck an average, <laughs> right, it would be roughly five months, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now I think some of those nine-month, you know, delays is probably a function of the fact that, hey, we're waiting on a pipeline to get built, 
And so oh, we're yeah. going to frag it, da, da, da. So let's say... Oh, that, and yeah. you've got these eight well pads and 12 well pads. Yeah, right. And, yeah. you there's know, a, it a, just takes... They, they're, all, they're all TD'd in a 12-day period, but mm -hmm. it took them three months to get yeah, it to there, right, so... Yeah. Okay, so again, let's just make it simple and say um, we're drilling 1,000 wells a month yep. at the current rig activity level. And let's say it takes five months between the time a well is getting drilled and when it's getting fracked. So times five would say that your, your, your stable number for drilled but uncompleted wells is five times 1,000, 5,000 wells, yeah, right? Because I was going to go 12,000 times... Uh, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. A, a, a fractional number. Yeah, of years, right? exactly. And my number is simple. 5, my simple. Yeah. Five thousand wells. So again, we're roughly six thousand drilled but uncompleted wells right now. Uh -huh. So this tells me that we have about four months, maybe five months, where we can still bring down uh, that uncompleted number until we get to the point where it's about as low as it can go. The irreducible yeah, minimum that's right. That's right. is five thousand. That also happens. Yeah, wells. that also we're in August. That also happens to make it around the end of the year. We'll sort of exhaust ah. the easy work when it comes to doing, yeah. you know, frack jobs, right? right? And any and so frack activity starting about January one of 2022 is really going to be linked to rig count, rig count, right? Yeah, right. So, and and you and you've seen uh -huh. it by yeah. um, right by looking at uh, the ratio between number of drill and rig mm -hmm. running and the number of rack spreads working. Right. If you back up four or five years, mm -hmm. five, six years, you had uh, four drilling rigs running right. and one frack spread working. Right. And then it was three drilling rigs running and mm -hmm. one frack spread working. Well, this right. year it's been two drilling rigs right. and one frack spread working. But again, the, the frack number was goosed was, because was, we're bet, drilling. We juiced it up. Yeah. So we're going to reverse course and now we're going to go back to... Yeah, three rigs running and somewhere between two and three rigs probably rigs per half. frack cr spread. I All think. right, so yeah. we, so if we do that math and yeah. we get to uh -huh. uh, what six hundred rigs, is that too high? Well, so I think the rate at which we're going, our again, our look into twenty twenty two with all the assumptions you have to make about where oil prices are going to go, what's going to happen to capital spending, discipline, and all the rest of it, um, it would appear to me that uh, we're on track to see rig count grow on the order of about 25% next year. Oh, so okay. if we're at, call it 500. Today, yeah, then 25% above that gets you to 600. Six, six, between 600 and 650. So that's 625. Middle of next year, right, that kind so of thing. So 625, and yeah. if our ratio, mm -hmm. if I divide that by two and a half. Uh, frack spreads. Frack right, spreads right, or right. something or other. Yeah. I'm quickly mm -hmm. going to come up with a number that I, I don't know what it's it about is. About two and a half to about 250 frack spreads. Yeah, two. which is roughly what we see today, right? It's flat. Yes, right, yeah. So that, that would be my point. So this year, 2021, we have seen rig count go up 7%. Frack activity go up 25 or 30%. Yeah. So Next year, I think we're gonna see the numbers reverse. I think we're gonna see drilling activity, measured by rig count anyway, go up on the order of 25%. And frack activity, Right. Languish. Yeah, it's not going to be able to grow very much. It may not grow at all. If you look at year over year measures for jobs being done, for frack spread counts, um, even for revenues, perhaps. You so, know, I was looking at uh, mm -hmm. the entire North American yep. frack revenues by quarter for the last three years. Okay, yes. And what you, of course, you see this devastating 70% mm -hmm. eh, collapse in all revenues when COVID oh, hit, rips. so Q2 last right. year. Mm -hmm. And then you've seen this rapid growth quarter, you know, uh, third quarter of last year, mm -hmm. it grew of last year, right. of last year, mm -hmm. it grew at 20%. So you're talking about sequential. Quarter over quarter. quarter, quarter. Mm -hmm. The yeah. fourth quarter of last year mm -hmm. grew by 40, per, no, 50%. Yeah. The first quarter of this year grew by 20%. Well, that's the wonder of small denominators. Well, right? exactly, it can grow yeah. on a percentage basis yeah. a lot, but in the second quarter, the one we just mm -hmm. finished, the frac revenue number only grew by 10%. So the acceleration, as it were, is slowing down. Yeah, the yeah. market's not falling, right. but the rate of growth yep. is certainly falling. And you, what we're doing is we're setting up a Q3, the one we're in right now, right. a Q4, right. the one we're going to be in, right. and a Q1 of the coming year that may see actually 0% growth on the frac revenue side of the market.
right? Yeah. So again, I think about different ways of measuring activity, and I've I've been thinking in terms of jobs or frac spreads. Yeah. You've been talking about a revenue I number, and of course, the magic sauce in there is are, is pricing going to recover any that might push those revenue growth figures up a little bit. So that's uh, that'll be an interesting thing. But you, but again, there's a, a challenge if the underlying level of activity isn't really changing very much. How is it? How easy might it be for frac service folks to push up pricing in an environment where utilization isn't getting any higher? So I think that's going to be the yeah. the key issue for that market next year. The rig guys are going to um, see pretty good growth, but I think on the frac service side, anyway, it's going and the attendant markets around the frac business are going to uh, to find that 2022 may be a little bit more disappointing than they would hope. Well, I'll tell you where disappointment mm -hmm. comes from. It's this: yep. you know, the the big publicly traded uh, service companies who have frac spreads. Mm -hmm. They're actually showing real, real discipline mm -hmm. about only adding a frac spread that's crewed up mm -hmm. if they've got work for it, and yep. that work is over a longer period of time. Yep. But you know, we just had a big auction the other day of uh, BJ Services. Uh, who knows how much horsepower? Right. But a mm -hmm. lot. All of a sudden, somebody out there in Chicago <laughs> owns a lot of uh, BJ Services pump trucks. Right. Those are not leaving the North American market somebody could use those trucks and become a really low-cost entrant in the frack industry. As and that, is, yeah, well, obviously, yes. And, and that's the part that, mm -hmm. that would concern me, like, mm -hmm. because a um, lot of discipline on the bigger company side. Once again, there's always somebody who wants to get in the frack business and uh, thinks it's a good idea. That's the romance. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and yet, uh, this is the time, yep. can I say clearly <laughs> enough to the camera, this is the time to not get in the frack business because it's not growing. As an aside, I've got a question for you. Ooh. What do you think about the adoption of eFrac out there in the marketplace? I yeah. get a, a lot of those kind of questions yeah. these days. EFRAC's what, maybe 10% of the crews that are working today? It was outsized because mm -hmm. the crews that idled and didn't come back to work, yeah. those were uh, you know tier two diesel engine, yeah. mm -hmm. and so the electric guy stayed in, in, in shape. Mm -hmm. Clearly the oil company customer would mm -hmm. like to have electricity yep. running the pumps. Mm -hmm. And even though I'd argue that the economic model is a little squirrely mm -hmm. on that thing, yep. if the customer wants it, the customer is going to get it. So um, we do have a forecast of E-FRAC fleets working. Mm -hmm. It's one we put together a year ago, yeah. and, and it's still in place. I don't know what the number is because I forgot. It's in well, our frack report. It is, it, it is a common thing. It hasn't gone away. It's, it's, it's being adopted. Well, that's our thoughts. Those are our thoughts around the frack business. Yeah. The world is waiting for this week's puzzler, Richard, so jump right on in. So let's see if people can answer this week's puzzler because of the prior puzzler. Yes. It was, was, con it was chaos. Stump the oil patch. So here you go. And this is actually about a trip that our, mm -hmm. our buddy Dave Hutchison made out to West Texas very recently. Dave goes out to West Texas all the time. He's going to go out there next week. Mm -hmm. But Dave was in, uh, he was in the Permian Basin a couple weeks ago, and he came across everybody's favorite type of oil field service company, a water transfer company. Okay. And the water transfer company was filling up a gigantic water containment pond. Yes. Water mm -hmm. that, coincidentally, to our topic, mm -hmm. was going to be used for frac job. So they're filling up this gigantic pond. Yes. And Dave, he's a gregarious guy. Mm -hmm. He struck up a conversation with the foreman who was in charge of filling up this gigantic pond. And the foreman told David... You the ready? following. Okay. The following. He yes. said, it would take seemed a little long to me. He said it would take 60 days, six zero. Yeah. It takes 60 days to fill the containment pond, but that his crew mm -hmm. was able to double the water level every day. For example, if the water level was one, one foot, foot the first day, it'd be two feet the next and day. And then four. And then four in the next I gotcha. Okay. And so here's the puzzler. Yes. How long does it take for the water transfer crew to get the containment pond half full. Ooh, interesting stuff. Yeah. It is, but okay, all right. of the information is there is that everything? you need. I'm I want go. there to be a winner. So if <laughs> I'll you, go get my rubber boots and go to work on the answer. And right get, right. get a yardstick. <laughs> uh, and so if you think you know the answer, yes. 
email it to us mm-hmm. uh, and send it to drilldownshow at gmail.com. And next week we'll read the correct answer from the hundreds of correct answers that I'm sure we'll get. I'm looking forward to it already. Anyway, thanks so much for listening. This has been The Drill Down Show. I'm John Spears. And I'm Richard Spears.